Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 28th, 2022, around 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for three tropical cyclones to be forming over the next couple of days, one in the Gulf of Mexico and two in the tropical Atlantic, including potential tropical cyclone two. How strong could it get? Well, let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, it is very, very busy for late June. First of all, starting from left to right, we have Invest Area 95L over here in the Gulf of Mexico. As you may remember, we've been talking about this over the last couple of days. This was a tropical wave, or not even a tropical wave. This was actually rather a disturbance in a complex of thunderstorms over the mainland United States that has dived down southwesterly and has now found itself in pretty warm waters and relatively low shear. This could go on to impact Texas as a tropical depression or storm. We have potential tropical cyclone two now located near the Windward Islands moving into the Caribbean. This could become a pretty strong hurricane over the next couple of days. And then we have a new tropical wave back here that is moving generally off towards the north and west that could also develop as it nears the northern part of the islands and another tropical wave that we'll have to watch later down the road. So again, looking at all the graphical representations, this is Invest Area 94 or 95L, 40% chance over the next five days. Here is Potential Tropical Cyclone 2, 90% over the next five days, and a new wave behind here that is moving towards the northwest here and will be approaching the island chain within the next about five to six days. Looking at Invest Area 95L today, we noticed that thunderstorm activity has increased and there actually is a surface center, it seems, somewhere down here. There is a little bit of shear impacting the system right now, which explains the organization uh, that's not really, it's just lacking right now. The organization support is lacking, but there certainly is convection to the north and given enough time as this drifts kind of towards the west and eventually northwest, this could end up becoming a tropical depression or storm as it nears Texas. If we look at the h -wharf upper level environment right now, you can kind of see that there is some northerly shear being uh, ingested into the storm from south to north. And that's really not allowing for organization around that low level circulation. But over the next day or two, that begins to change. And the upper level environment at this point would be a little bit more conducive for outflow as the storm nears Texas. And that certainly could allow for a brief depression or storm to form. Switching gears, looking at potential tropical cyclone two, this is the uh, 2 p.m. advisory. And you can see right now that again, we have tropical storm watches and warnings uh, for portions of the island chain and as well portions of Northern South America. This is expected to become a tropical cyclone tomorrow or on Wednesday as it is moving through the island chain. Eventually after this time, it is expected to kind of meander and kind of just move around the northern tip here of South America and then find itself into the Caribbean somewhere in here. After that, additional strengthening is possible and the Hurricane Center is calling for this to become a hurricane by Saturday morning as it approaches the landfall, its second landfall here in the Central American area. Then after that, this will then eventually cross into the East Pacific Basin. If you take a look here at the visible satellite today for PTC2, we notice that today the organization is a lot better compared to yesterday. We actually have what seems to be a circulation trying to develop, at least in the mid-levels, that is located somewhere right in about here, uh, still a little while away here, still a little ways away from the island chain at this particular point. This is moving generally towards the west-northwest like this, and on this current trajectory, if this were to be where a low-level circulation would form, this would miss the chain here of northern South America, which certainly would be a little bit of a track change. If we take a look here at the visible zoomed in satellite today, we notice that the system has again gained that rotation a little bit further to the north compared to down south. And we were talking about how yesterday that a storm that ended up further south would run into the land here of Central America, or I'm sorry, Northern South America. And with this being said, there has been a marked jump in thunderstorm activity to the north that has sustained itself, generally speaking, today. The convective trends have allowed for some of this organization to take place, and there is some hints here at what could be occurring. 
If you look at the latest recon plane that was in there, they are returning now, but the latest recon plane that was in there from a little while ago on their first pass did sample about 40 to 50 knot winds here in this band of convection. Now, this is partly because there is enhanced trade wind flow across the north here. As you get higher in latitude, the trade wind flow begins to increase, and generally that's what we're seeing here. There is not a well-defined circulation. In fact, any circulation could be argued right around 9 degrees north. Now, this is not the main circulation as we can see that this area is completely devoid of convection. If we go back to the satellite here, 9 degrees north is right about here. And there's nothing going on really in here besides cirrus clouds at the moment, which means that there's no real support for this to be the dominant low-level circulation which means that this area to the north will probably work itself down to the surface given enough time of convection you know convection that is able to sustain itself and be moving generally northwest and away from the coast here of northern south america if you look at the 6z h wharf model this kind of gives us a, a depiction of what might happen now again the model i think might be is still a little bit too far south because it's still trying to initialize that bottom part of the wave and if this is able to drill a new circulation uh, further north this might be on a trajectory that is a little bit different here and keeps it away generally from south america now, we notice that in a couple of days here, the upper level environment is expected to be relatively favorable once this gets into the Caribbean. Generally speaking, high pressure across the United States will be able to keep this thing kind of squashed down here into the South Central Caribbean and not really allow for much significant latitude gain at this particular point. However, any storm that can miss South America and get strong in this vicinity does have a chance to actually slow down enough for this ridge to at least abate some and allow for a storm to get a tad bit more north. I don't really see a chance of this getting into the Gulf of Mexico. It does not look like conditions certainly favor that. And if it were to get too far north, it would start getting sheared by this upper level low that's located over Bahamas in Cuba. Uh, by Friday and that would certainly not allow for additional strengthening once this gets too far north. So right now this mainly looks to be on a trajectory towards Central America and as it's doing so the upper level environment is very supportive for additional organization and in fact the H wharf here calls for a pretty intense hurricane uh, as this is approaching the coastline here of Central America. So again, mainly for portions of Central America the biggest threat is going to be that storm surge and flooding threat. I do believe that, that storm surge and flooding threat will probably be the, the, the higher end risks there for Central America. Of course, this is a little bit higher than what we are expecting you know, in the Windward Islands and Northern South America because this will be stronger, supposedly, by this time if, if the models are correct. And this could certainly lead to a pretty significant round of flooding and storm surge problems for that particular area. Along with that, again, the current trajectory right now is taking it generally on this particular path here, and there is the risk for some pretty significant impacts to portions of Central America here highlighted in red. This will likely be corrected further south over the next uh, little while here as new model runs continue to come in. There is still the potential that outside impacts could impact portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, but uh, this would be pretty low-end impacts, and I'm not really expecting to see much in the way of impacts from PTC2, uh, what will probably be named Bonnie uh, in this particular region. So again, we'll be watching for that northward trend, but I'm not all that enthused about a trend that would miss uh, really miss Central America at this point, so it's going to kind of be a waiting game with that. And then, of course, we also have the potential for Invest Area 95L to become a tropical depression or storm as it nears Texas. Heavy rainfall and gusty winds will be the primary concern with that system as well. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.